As you probably know, following the Second World War, trials were conducted with the purpose of bringing Nazi war criminals to justice. Between 1945 and 1949, a series of trials were carried out in Nuremberg in Germany. The defendants included high-ranking Nazi officials, doctors, lawyers and industrialists. The most well-known trials took place between 1945 and 1946 and featured the major war criminals. Today we will focus on this trial and in particular the individual verdicts and sentences. However, there were 12 other trials which subsequently followed punishing further Nazi war criminals. Of the 24 individuals indicted in this trial, 12 were given a death penalty, 7 were given sentences in prison, 2 no decisions were made and 3 were acquitted. There were four indictments of which each defendant was accused of. The first being participation in a common plan or conspiracy for the accomplishment of a crime against peace. The second was planning and initiating and waging wars of aggression and other crimes of peace. The third indictment was war crimes and the final and fourth was crimes against humanity. Today in alphabetical order we will run through each of the 24 defendants and their sentences. Martin Bormann Throughout the Second World War, Martin Bormann would constantly be at the side of Hitler. He succeeded Rudolf Hess as the Nazi Party Secretary. Being charged with all indictments but planning, initiating and waging wars of aggression, he was found guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity. Bormann was sentenced to death in absentia due to disappearing in the last days of the war in the fall of Berlin. His remains would be found later in Berlin in 1972. Bormann would never face justice for his crimes. Karl Dernitz Grand Admiral Karl Dernitz was appointed the successor of Adolf Hitler. Initially the leader of the Kriegsmarine, he rose to that position due to sheer luck, with Hitler declaring Goering and Himmler traitors and expelling them from the Nazi party. Dernitz was convicted of carrying out unrestricted submarine warfare, however was not punished due to the fact that America had also been committing the same crimes. It's fair to say that he had an excellent lawyer. He was found guilty of indictment 2, waging wars of aggression, and also free of war crimes. However, he was only sentenced to 10 years in prison. Released from prison on the 1st of October 1956, Dernitz would later give interviews after the war, giving us an insight into the hierarchy of the Nazi party, and he later died in 1980. Hans Frank One of the lesser-known Nazis, Hans Frank was appointed Governor-General of the occupied Polish territories following the German invasion of Poland. He would later go on to terrorise the population and became involved in the mass murder of the Jews. He ordered the use of forced labour camps and oversaw four of the extermination camps. In the latter part of the war he would be the head of the general government. Frank would be sentenced to death and hung even though he expressed his remorse and repentance. Wilhelm Frick Frick would be Hitler's Minister of the Interior between 1933 and 1943. He would later go on to be the Reich Protector for Bohemian Moravia a post previously held by Reinhard Heydrich. Frick was convicted of waging wars of aggression, war crimes and crimes against humanity. He had a huge role in authoring the Nuremberg Laws, a series of anti-Semitic legislation that would become infamous with the Holocaust and Jewish suffering. Frick was sentenced to death. Upon stepping onto the gallows, his last words were, Long live eternal Germany. Hans Frischer Hans Frischer was a senior member of Goebbels' propaganda ministry. Throughout the war he was a popular wartime commentator and had made a career on radio due to similarities between his and Goebbels' voices. Allegedly, no one inside the trial understood why Frischer was present at the trials. After his acquittal, he worked with the prosecution disclosing his knowledge of the planned invasion of Poland and other Nazi plans. This was enough for him to demonstrate knowledge that he was actually guilty of what he was accused of Later he would be tried again at a denazification court and sentenced to nine years. Walter Funk Walter Funk during the war was Hitler's Minister of the Economics and the head of the Reichsbank. Funk was responsible for the acceleration of Germany's rearmament in the early 1930s and as president of the Reichsbank he banked the gold and materials stolen from the victims of the Holocaust. This included gold rings, glasses, jewellery and even gold teeth. Funk was labelled the banker of gold teeth by American chief prosecutor Robert Jackson. Funk would cry during the presentation of evidence and also needed sleeping pills at night. Charged with all four indictments, Funk would be found innocent of only indictment one and guilty of the other three. He would be sentenced to life imprisonment 
but was released in May 1957 due to ill health, dying from diabetes in 1960. Hermann Goering The most senior and one of the most infamous trial at Nuremberg, Hermann Goering was the Reich Marshal and commander of the Luftwaffe throughout Hitler's reign. He was originally the second most senior Nazi and was Hitler's successor. However, in April 1945, he dramatically fell from favour. Hitler was convinced by Bormann that Goering was trying to depose the Führer. Goering was then suspended from the Nazi party. Charged with every indictment, Goering was found guilty with every one. At the trial, he was known to be a shadow of his former self, looking dramatically thinner as the Allies had to wean him off an addiction to morphine. Goering throughout this lost £60 in weight. After being sentenced to death, Goering argued that he wanted to be shot as a soldier instead of being hung. In a final act of defiance, he would commit suicide by a hidden cyanide capsule the night before his execution. Rudolf Hess We have covered the bizarre capture and flight of Rudolf Hess in a previous video. Being Hitler's deputy Führer, Hess was bizarrely captured in Scotland following a flight in 1941 in which he attempted to broker peace with Britain. Since then he had been imprisoned. Hess was indicted on all four counts, however found guilty of charges 1 and 2 and innocent of committing war crimes and crimes against humanity. Hess would be later known as the last Nazi, being sentenced to life in prison and being incarcerated at Spandau Prison. He would mysteriously commit suicide in 1987. Alfred Yodel Alfred Yodel was the chief of the operations staff of the Armed Forces High Command under Adolf Hitler's regime. Yodel signed the Declaration of Surrender on May 7th 1945 as a representative of Dernitz. Following this, he was arrested and charged on every indictment at Nuremberg. Throughout his trial, he was met with questions about mass shootings of Soviet prisoners of war. However, claimed that only those prisoners who ignored orders were shot. He was also faced with charges including the unlawful deportation and then aiding the executions. Yoda was also met with allegations that he helped Hitler seize power in 1933, of which he managed to prove to be untrue. Pleading not guilty, he was found guilty on every charge and sentenced to death. His last words were, I greet you, my eternal Germany. Ernst Kautenbrunner Kautenbrunner was the highest ranking SS leader to be tried at Nuremberg. Charged with every charge but number two, planning initiation and waging wars of aggression, he was found innocent on charge one, but guilty of the charges of crimes against humanity and also war crimes. During the early stages of the trial, he was in hospital suffering from episodes of a subarachnoid haemorrhage. The tribunal denied his request for a pardon due to this illness. Kautzebrunner stated that he protested against the ill treatment of the Jews to Himmler and also to Hitler. He also denied that he had never visited Matthausen concentration camp, despite evidence on the contrary. Kautzebrunner even made a claim that he was responsible for the end of the final solution. Kautzebrunner was hung after being sentenced to death. Wilhelm Keitel Another one of the lesser-known Nazis, Keitel was the head of the Oberkommando, der Wehrmacht and Defence Minister between 1938 and 1945. Keitel was known for his unwavering loyalty to Hitler. He was met with all the charges and evidence was discovered of him signing orders for the execution of soldiers and political prisoners. Keitel's defence was that he was purely following orders, however this was not accepted by the courts. Despite expressing repentance, Keitel was sentenced to death. His hanging was botched, however, with the trapdoor being too small, causing him to suffer head injuries, hitting the trapdoor during the drop. The force of the hanging was also insufficient, with Keitel taking 24 minutes to die. Gustav Krupp Gustav Krupp was the CEO of Friedrich Krupp AG. He was a heavy industrialist from 1909 to 1941. He and his son would lead the company through two world wars, producing almost everything for the German war effort including U-boats, battleships, trains, machine guns and tanks. Gustav, due to an error, was indicted, even though his son Alfred had ran the company for much of the Second World War. Krupp would be declared medically unfit to stand trial due to him being partially paralysed. However, should he have recovered, the indictment would have been placed upon him. Krupp died in 1950. Robert Ley Robert Ley was the head of the DAF, the German Labour Front, he is known for the establishment of the Strength Through Joy campaigns. Indicted on charges 1, 3 and 4, Ley committed suicide by strangling himself in his cell using a noose made from tearing a towel into strips. He then fastened this to the toilet pipe in his cell. 
Because of this, no decision was made. Baron Constantine von Neurath Von Neurath was a Minister of Foreign Affairs between 1932 to 1938, before being replaced by Joachim von Ribbentrop. He also became later the Reich Protector of Bohemia and Moravia between 1939 and 1943, resigning in 1943 due to a dispute with Hitler. Neurath's crimes against humanity came throughout this tenure by suppressing the Czech resistance and executing several university students. It was established that although Neurath was a participant in the war crimes, he had no prominent power throughout the height of the Third Reich's tyranny and was only a minor part who adhered to the atrocities. Because of this, he was found guilty on all counts, however was sentenced to imprisonment of 15 years. He would be released in 1954 following a heart attack, dying in 1956. Franz von Papen Von Papen was a Chancellor of Germany in 1932 and the Vice-Chancellor under Hitler in 1933 to 1934. He would later become the Ambassador to Austria and the Ambassador to Turkey. The Tribunal found that he had not been involved in the annexation of Austria. He was acquitted at Nuremberg even though he had committed some political immoralities. Later, von Papen would be sentenced to eight years hard labour. Erich Rader Erich Rader was the Commander-in-Chief of the Kriegsmarine from 1928 until his retirement in 1943, of which Dernitz then replaced him. He was found guilty of each of the charges except crimes against humanity. Rader had expected to be hung for his crimes, however was surprised that he was instead sentenced to life in prison. Within his imprisonment at Spandau, he would become a companion of Dernitz, his successor. He was released in 1955 due to ill health. Joachim von Ribbentrop Von Ribbentrop's role as Foreign Minister of the Nazi Party from 1938 to 45 saw him deeply involved in the Final Solution. In 1942, he had ordered German diplomats in Axis countries to send their Jews to their death camps in the East. Also, he supported the lynching of Allied airmen shot down over Germany. He was also held accountable for the atrocities which took place in Denmark. Claiming Hitler made the important decisions, he maintained his loyalty to the Führer throughout his captivity. Expressing repentance in his trial, he was sentenced to death and hung in October 1945. Alfred Rosenberg Rosenberg was the head of the Reich Ministry for the Occupied Eastern Territories and was an influential theorist of the Nazi Party. He is considered one of the main authors of the Nazi Party's ideological creeds on race and the persecution of the Jews, Lebensraum and the Treaty of Versailles. He was also known for his hatred of Christianity. At Nuremberg, Rosenberg was tried of every charge convicted of each of these and sentenced to death by hanging. Fritz Saukel Fritz Saukel was a Gauleiter, or regional leader, of Thuringia between 1927 to 1945. He was also in charge for labour deployment from March 1942 up until the end of the war. He was in control of using forced labour and conditions in the camps were extremely poor, with severe discipline being applied and this was extremely bad for the concentration camp prisoners. He denied that it was slave labour, or common practice to work people to death deliberately. Saukel even tried to shift some blame onto Albert Speer, however he was found guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity. He was sentenced to death and hung. Dr. Hjalmar Schnacht Dr. Schnacht was a prominent banker and economist throughout the Second World War. He was a pre-war president of the Reich Bank. He was also economics minister between 1934 and 1937. He would go on to admit his guilt in breaking the Treaty of Versailles. Being charged with the planning or conspiracy in a crime against peace and waging wars of aggression, he was outraged at being brought to trial as a war criminal. This was mostly because he had been imprisoned in a concentration camp by the Nazis. He was acquitted of both the charges. Baudor von Schirach Von Schirach, between 1933 and 1940, was the head of the Hitler Youth, an organisation that would ultimately train young boys to become soldiers. Later on, he would go on to become the Gauleiter of Vienna between 1940 and 1945. He claimed that members of the Hitler Youth were innocent from any war crimes and stated that he did not know about the extermination camps. He also stated that he protested to Berman about the inhumane treatment of the Jews. He was sentenced to 20 years in prison at Spandau Prison, being released in 1966. Arthur Quart. Sazen Quart was instrumental to the Nazi Anschluss of Austria. He briefly acted as Austrian Chancellor in 1938. At Nuremberg, he faced the four charges, including war crimes and crimes against humanity. During the trial, his IQ was tested at 141, which was the second highest of the defendants. 
he stated that while he had some moral objections for the deportation of the Jews, there must be sometimes justifications for mass evacuations. He also stated that his conscience was untroubled and that it improved the conditions of the Dutch people. Sezenquart was acquitted of conspiracy, but found guilty of all the other charges and was executed by hanging. Albert Speer A personal friend of Hitler, Albert Speer worked as Minister of Armaments from 1942 and was Hitler's favourite architect. Speer was indicted on all four counts, however was only found guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity. In his role as armaments minister, Speer was found responsible for using slave labourers in occupied territories for the armament production for the German war effort. Speer expressed great repentance throughout his trial and denied having any knowledge about the Holocaust and the German crimes. This claim ultimately saved him from hanging. However, in 2007, evidence was discovered that showed Speer did have knowledge of the extermination camps. Three of the eight judges advocated the death penalty for Speer. However, the remaining five did not, so Speer was sentenced to 20 years imprisonment. Julius Stryker Stryker was a Gauleiter of Franconia between 1922 and 1940. However, it was through publishing that Stryker would become infamous. In 1923, he founded the anti-Semitic newspaper Der Sturmer. The publication played a huge role in spreading anti-Semitic, anti-communist and pro-Nazi propaganda. Accused of conspiracy to commit crimes against peace and crimes against humanity, he was only found guilty of crimes against humanity. Throughout his trial, he played up and answered questions with negative comments about the Allies, Jews and the court. Stryker was sentenced to be hung, along with the other war criminals that had been given a death penalty on the 16th of October 1946. However, chillingly, upon walking up to the gallows, Stryker shouted Heil Hitler, and as the executioner placed a hood over his head, he stated, The Bolsheviks will hang you one day. As mentioned earlier, the major war criminal trials were just one of many different trials of Nazi war criminals. We will cover the other ones at a later date. Thank you for watching The Untold Past. To support the channel, please subscribe. Once again, thank you for watching.